right. Um, it's kind of interesting to segue from that because um, for me, nature is the place I'm probably more awake than anywhere else in my li- being in my life. Um, but I, but I think that actually is is in and of itself a segue. And that you know what we were looking at or struggling with in some ways in our group was the fact that it is all so different and it's also unique. Is there are there common threads you know in in our connection to nature or not and and for me um, what I want to talk about a little bit is um, sort of my reaction to the assignment first of all um, to talking about our connection to nature Um, and and maybe in doing that tell you a a little bit about what mine is um, but not as it I have no single experience I could put my finger on that is like such a unique experience I could, you know, that I would tell everyone that like that I could hook it onto. Um, for me, I've, I don't know, I guess as soon as I could walk, I was immersed in nature at all times. And so, you know, so my experience is much more intuitive and it was actually really hard to come up with, you know, a reflection on how I connect to nature. Um, so I tell you what my first reaction was, was which is, I don't want to do this. I don't want to tell you about it. And the reason I didn't want to tell you about it is because it felt unbelievably intimate to tell you this. I have you know, a very, very specific personal experience that is so dear to me um, and, and so critical and, and important to me that it just felt like a form of exhibitionism or, or you know, too revealing to, to tell a group of strangers, essentially, <laughs> um, about this. And, I guess I'm going to do it anyway, but maybe that's just because I'm going to model what we're going to do later. <laughs> I mean, it's an invitation to all of you to take this extra risk of maybe just revealing a tad bit more than what is safe to talk about. Um, and so my second reaction to tell about your or reflect on your connection to nature is that I need to reframe that. <laughs> I need to rephrase that. Um, for me, it is realizing my relationship with nature or um, living my relationship with nature, embodying it. There's nothing, I, I come from this presence, uh, that premise that I am part of it to begin with. There's always a connection, a connection I will never be able to break out of, no matter what I do, how aware I am of my connection to it, I can't break out of it. So the only question really I have is, how do I attend to my relationship with nature or to my connection um, that I have? And so then that to me raises questions about how do I even view that relationship? You know, what kind of a relationship is it? Is it like to a human being? Um, You know, we have things like to connecting to mother nature. I mean, is it like a parental relationship? Um, You know, we have these more instrumental ones about earth providing for us or whatever. (coughs) Nah, that doesn't quite, that feels way too, too, you know, instrumental, too practical. Is it just playground? Is it sort of my, my scene on which I, you know, that, that's my setting in which I then play out a, my life or something? Um, is it this idea, I think you, Carolyn, mentioned this uh, about a partnership. Do I feel I am a mutual partner to this, you know, what, what you said is so amorphous, so difficult to describe? And that doesn't quite fit either, but I have a major scale problem, you know? I am fairly small and nature is really big and, and you know, it, it's not a, an equal partner. I'm not an equal partner to that. So, um, so that's one question that I have, uh, what, what it is. Um, and then based on that, de- depending on when I define what this relationship is really about, then, then can I say what I need from it, what I want from it, what I want to give it, what I can give it. Um, and yeah, and, and sort of what I want to give it, how I want to change it if, if, if it's not right and whatever, you know, <laughs> however that fits. So I guess where I want to start out is by telling you what to me is this, this deeply intimate kernel of my relationship to nature. And that is that I grew up in a very chaotic, dysfunctional family and spent also a lot of my, rela- my childhood alone um, because of moves and whatever, I, my, my school being far away, I'm not allowed to you know, go to my friends, whatever. I spent a lot of time alone, or if I spent it in the context of my fa- family, it was you know, dysfunctional and chaotic. So for me to go out into nature was to go home. It was to go to the safe haven. It was to go to the place that is calm, that is, 
dependable, that's, you know, yeah, that I could count on in a way maybe I should have counted on my family, but I, you know, didn't have that. So it was the place to feel safe and connected um, in which I was, I, I so, somehow figured out and very intuitively, I guess, how to connect to it. You know, it wasn't just it coming to me, me to it. I mean, it was sort of a mutual thing. Um, and it always felt spacious. And, and that, to me, is an important piece, too. And by that, I mean not, you know, it was an open in my, I grew up in um, rural southern uh, West Germany, in the Black Forest and in the hills of um, the Rhine Valley. And, you know, whether or not you see that as geographically spacious is one thing. No, it was spacious in the sense of there was a space for me. You know, that I didn't feel that. I didn't get that impression of having a space for me and my family. So, um, and hence then, I think that's the, the root of my feeling I belong on this planet. And it's, it's in that one place where I feel it. I don't feel that anywhere else. You know, in this sort of very planetary sense, I feel it. I don't, you know, I live in Boulder. I don't belong to Boulder. <laughs> you know, I've moved across continents. I don't know which continent is really, you know, where I belong. I don't know. But on the, in this sort of planetary sense of having a space in it, um, that's what I, what I experience. And because of that, and because it was like that every single time I went out, um, I, it allowed me to start to build a sense of trust. Um, you know, Mitch talked this morning about this, uh, the, the, the importance of, of teaching kids about natural history in a place. And I would say I probably know, you know, this little about any one place that I live in in terms of its natural history, knowing its ecology, its whatever climate and all those things. I mean, I've learned a lot. I'm a geographer by training. I've learned a lot over time about the whole functioning of this, of the planet and, and different places. But I would say I know actually quite little about the specific places that I live in. But I've com I completely intuit how it works. You know, I, I've never intellectually understood how, well, like, you know, post-talk, post-graduate, <laughs> I've sort of taught myself or, or learned how it works. But before, long before that, um, I knew it in my gut without ever having, you know, an ability to consciously describe what happened to me at a fire. I mean, you know, I didn't go there. <laughs> I never, never went to that, that level. Um, and what's interesting in reflecting on the, the issue of, of climate change or global change is that even now that it is rapidly changing, that we might be approaching places where it crosses a threshold and might go into a whole different system state, function very differently, I find it still consistent within itself. You know, the way, in my intuitive understanding, it's still logical that it does what it does right now, you know, that it responds the way it does to what we do. Or, and so it, it's, it's not breaking the trust. It's, it's really working the way I, you know, uh, learned intuitively how it works. Um, so that includes violent natural events. They, to me, they, you know, I've never developed a fear even in the face of, you know, of these natural events. I might not be comfortable, you know, walking in the um, thunderstorm on the top of the hill. I mean, that to me is just logical self-preservation. It's, you know, if it did hit me, well, that would be the logical thing for nature to do. <laughs> so, you know, I just find myself so embedded in that that I don't see it as a threat or an external something that could do something to me. Um, so I guess what... I simply want to, you know, or how to summarize that for me is one perspective to simply say that nature functions as a surrogate family in what it has done to me psychologically. Um, and, you know, if I sort of go to a meta level above that, well, that's a form of appropriation and objectifying nature again. You know, it's doing something for me, for my purposes, for my very instrumental purposes. Um, but it, I guess it answers in some ways these very personal questions of what do I need and want from my connection, my relationship of, um, with nature. I guess, you know, even if maybe I could put this negative spin on that I'm appropriating nature in that very um, personal way for me, I will say that I think it's the only place I have a functional relationship. You know, in terms of how I respond then or how I interact with nature, it's the only one place where I feel like I'm acting like a sane person. 
like a healthy person, um, whereas you know I can't do that necessarily in a social context. So that's we'll stop there on that one. <laughs> um, but it does bring up then the, the final question of um, what do I want to give into this relationship? What do, what can I offer it? Um, and so there's a there are a number of things for it. One is that I, it, I'm very aware of the fact that. Like in any relationship, I need to attend to it. I need to care for it. If I begin to ne neglect it, I will, you know, probably lose that, the, the aliveness of that experience and uh, fulfilling these needs. Um, and so I need to, I need to, you know, find it. I need to um, expose myself to, in, in uh, into places or whatever where I have that experience. Um, So even if the connection, you know, remains, sort of my consciousness or aliveness of the relationship depends on my caring for it. Um, the, the second piece about it is that I want to grow in that relationship. Um, and one aspect of that is that I want to understand it. I want to understand myself in it. Um, and I want to be challenged in it. Um, and. And here I just want to throw out a few examples. I, you know, I talked with Melanie about this yesterday on our way here, where we were looking at the hills, and um, there were clear cuts, and there were, um, you know, the the uh, insect outbreaks there, and it wasn't pretty, right? Here we're driving through a really pretty, amazing landscape on the one hand, and yet the, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't beautiful. So one of the challenges I find is how do I relate and keep this relationship as alive? when it is not pretty, when it's not beautiful. And for all intents and purposes, given what we're doing with climate change to the world, it's not going to be all that much longer, you know, as pretty as it is <laughs> currently. So how do we, is it possible for us to, you know, or for me possible to keep our connection to, in the sensory sense that, you know, David talks about, are we able to keep that alive as the world is not beautiful? Um, I guess there's sort of, a, you know, and other people have written about this too, but it's sort of if you view nature as mirror and see the places in which it's not tamed, in which it's not behaving like you want, um, you know, view that as a mirror and, and like how accepting can you be of your own ways of not being tamed and pretty and as one should be or whatever our standard or aesthetic norms are that, you know, tell you how you should be. <laughs> so I, I view... Often in my, my connection to nature, I, I find myself taking these things that bug me <laughs> about my environment as, you know, what, what is it that's bugging me here, what inside, what I can't incorporate. Um, and so given this, this existential and important nature um, that nature is to my sense of self, how am I sitting with my relative impotence? given that I can't affect it as much as I want to, or that I'm affecting it more than I want to. You know, how am I, how is my power relationship to in that relationship, um, which most of the time I find really uncomfortable? Um, how do I come to peace with the fact that even if I give my best, um, it often just looks like it's not enough? So I guess, what what I'm trying to get at is that for me, you know, nature has has really been deeply involved in creating my sense of self, and it's confronting me with probably the most existential questions um, that I could be facing. Um, and I would think that you know, sort of at a, on a species level, it's this tonic of nature that we need to become saner people. Um, on a personal level, it feels to me that I need that place to come back to over and over again to confront myself with the things that, you know, maybe have a chance of keeping me sane as a person. So I'll just end it there. Thank you.